Great to see you. All right. So uh, that was our opening face off. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, a bit of a tough way for me to start because obviously having to reflect on so many uh, difficult moments, but it's time for the power play. Movement, not a moment. And we're here with NHL leaders to discuss initiatives and programs that the league has created uh, throughout the hockey system that are welcoming and inclusive of all communities. And joining us today are Brian Blake, the Senior Director, Diversity and Inclusion in the NHL, and he's currently leading the efforts uh, in advising NHL clubs on best practices in recruitment, culture, and growth strategies with a diverse audience. Mandy Duhamel was un uh, unable to join us today due to some unforeseen uh, circumstances. Uh, and Jeff Scott, who is the Vice President uh, of Community Development and Growth for the NHL, and currently helping the NHL with strategies to change the global conversation about hockey to make experiences that are inclusive and accessible. Now, full disclosure here, uh, everyone watching, I know Brian and Jeff. Uh, I am a part of the NHL's Fan Inclusion Committee, which you'll probably be hearing about. And uh, these are good guys. And uh, I, I just thought I'd put that out there. Full disclosure on this power. <laughs> yeah, I, they, I'm the quarterback here, I guess you could say. <laughs> But uh, you're the captain. You're, I guess you're the so. Captain. I guess so. So, so you know, uh, Brian and Jeff, I would like to get started with you uh, in the sense that we know this is an issue for the sport. We know that the NHL has to deal with this, and people are always looking uh, for the NHL to lead. And so, if we can get into some specifics today, I think everyone would love to learn. Where is the league at on the issue of racial discrimination? What are some of the objectives and investments that are specifically targeting uh, eliminating racism? We'll start uh, off with Jeff. Yeah, so first off, thank you for having us. Um, you know, this is a, a moment in time where I think we take it for granted. Um, as, as you started off at, at, at the top of this, you know, this is, this is a movement. It's not a moment, right? We understand that racism uh, has existed and has permeated our communities for, for hundreds of years. And we're happy to be at, uh, at, at the forefront here at the NHL to truly drive this conversation and make sure that we are being uh, positive citizens, positive role models uh, to address these unfortunate situations. So, you know, first and foremost, just wanted to say that. And Harna Ryan, it's always great to see you um, and, and looking forward to the conversation as well. Uh, so to answer your question, as far as, you know, the objectives, you know, at, at, at the NHL, we're extremely committed to making sure that we honestly just improve um, the community. Right. We want to make sure that hockey experience uh, truly represents multicultural, uh, underrepresented communities uh, and environments and cultures, you know, across the entire hockey ecosystem. You know, we've looked at it through a very microscopic lens at this point, right? Because this is something that's a new muscle for us as a sport, you know, to truly talk about racism and culture and what that means. So for, for objectives perspectives, you know, we wanna make sure first and foremost that we advance the cultural availability of hockey, right? And the communities that we serve. Um, and we wanna do this through storytelling. We wanna do this through partnerships we want to do this through financial investments, but really making the sport available to all walks of life, to all cultures, regardless of, of, of where you live, work, play, or, or where you come from. Uh, another thing that we are, are truly focused on is our representation, representation specifically of people that look like us, you know, the BIPOC community, because the more we have in normalized representation, then the more we'll notice that, um, that, that these type of conversations will be authentic, right? The next thing that we want to do is just think about our access and opportunity. Hockey is a, is, is a challenging sport, whether you have been the third generation hockey player or you're a first generation hockey player, access to it is, 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 is challenging, right? There's only so many hockey rinks in certain, certain communities. You know, it's not really a, a, a focal um, uh, sporting activity when you're in school, right? So we want to make sure we, you know, alleviate and eliminate those type of uh, those bur those barriers. Right. So creating access and opportunities. Uh, we want to make sure that the systems that we put in place are also um, supportive. Right. And, and what I mean by that is when you look at um, 
the infrastructures, when you look at, um, you know, the educational platforms that we put out, we want to make sure we have those systems in place um, so that we can bring down cost so that we can create more opportunities for people to engage, whether you're in school, whether you're an, uh, an adult like us who, who, who are trying to learn more about the sport, but just understanding the system. And then lastly, but not least, is partnerships and partnerships with corporations partnerships with educational institutions, hence this conversation here, and partner partnerships with, with government you know, officials and government relations, because we know that there's an extreme power in that. So you know, that's, that's our holistic approach when we think about you know, where we see the league going, and specifically what I mean is where we're going when it, when it pertains to uh, engaging and investing in BIPOC and under-indexed and underrepresented communities. Brian, uh, Commissioner Bettman has spoken about uh, diversity, inclusion, racism, and I, the hiring of Kim Davis goes back a few years now, and that's obviously a, a huge step, and it's, it's why yourself and Jeff are, are here. She's, uh, she's creating that all-star team to get the sport into the right place. But what are you seeing from NHL leadership to help address racism and inclusion in these issues in hockey? Um, well, first, I want to thank uh, McEwen University for putting this on and for having us. Really appreciate it and, and, and grateful to, to have this platform to share this with you guys. And and, and always happy to see you, Harner Ryan. Um, you know, one of the things that <clears throat> really stood out from leadership is the committee and council structure that we've, that we've created to permeate our ecosystem to try to affect change. So... Um, you know, we've got, we, we have a main council, it's the Executive Inclusion Council, that's made up of team owners, uh, team presidents, GMs, and other executives. So we've got input right at the top, and they're focusing on, uh, you know, you heard Jeff talk earlier about representation. Well, they're keying in on representation uh, throughout the sport, and, and in particular at, the, at our league and at the club. So who are we hiring? How are we going about it? How are we getting the word out? Who are we looking for? Intentionality, things of that nature. So one of the things that we're doing to further this work is we are, at the, we are uh, uh, in the process of creating a demographic study that will allow people to self-identify and then use the information from that. And we say people, we mean people that, that work at the league and at the clubs. And we're going to use that information to help with specified targeting to help us determine you know, how we're going to go about hiring and, and, and growing people of color and women and, 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 this, and the like at, the, at our organization. In support of that executive inclusion committee, there are uh, council, there are three other committees that were able to, to show leadership with regard to particular constituents in, in our game. So we have a fan inclusion committee, a youth that, I'm up, that I help facilitate, a youth hockey uh, inclusion committee that Jeff helps facilitate among others, and a player inclusion uh, committee. So each of their names obviously specify the constituents that they represent, but they're looking at specific things to make sure that we're rooting things out of the game that have no place in the game and creating an inclusive as environment as possible for people to be a part of the game. So for fans, it's looking at how can we create experiences where multicultural fans want to be a part of the game, they want to come back, they want to be uh, and, and feel included. You know, from the youth one, you know, it's all about how can create an environment where all youth can feel comfortable, feel welcome, and feel like they can excel and just have a good time. Um, and, and what avenues can be opened up to, to create that? And then from the player perspective, it's, you know, we were leaving no stone unturned. We're, we have um, the player committee, which is made up of current players, former players, female players, and just looking across the spectrum at how we can make sure the locker room environment is one that's welcoming to all and to make sure that players are positioned to be the best allies that, that they can be in furtherance of these efforts. So we've seen in some other sports where, uh, you know, sometimes certain people in the sport have uh, the, the proper intention, the right intention uh, to, to fix some of these problems, but you sometimes have a certain owner in another professional sport league, for example, might come out and say something that just 
really shows the lack of knowledge um, and the lack of understanding of the issues. And so combating racism, it requires a lot of learning. So it's it's key because I really feel that everyone, it has to be, you know, the entire sport from uh, ownership to management to players, everybody has to take this on as a mission. Uh, and that's the only way we're going to be able to eradicate racism and discrimination. So Brian, can you tell me what, uh, what actions the NHL is taking to ensure learning is, is going on for employees and players? Yeah, this is this is huge. This is something we're really proud of. Um, many of you may have seen um, in our press release that we launched a few months ago, which was like six pages long, uh, <laughs> identifying many of the things that we're doing. And um, I happen to, you know, agree that learning is is one of the most important tools to uh, combating racism and making sure that we are an inclusive environment as possible. So there are a couple of things, there are a number of things going on. Number one, um, we are in the process of, um, uh, of getting ready to launch an organization-wide inclusive learning experience at the NHL. It's going to be, a, a, it's going to be immersive. It is going to be in-depth. It is going to be something that we expect will uh, really equip uh, our personnel, the NHL, to be able to um, engage in these in these concepts and and understand experiences and build the empathy they need to be able to be effective, and that's going to affect how people show up at work. It's going to affect how we market. It's going to affect um, how we do our our hiring. It's going to affect who we build relationships with in the community. So we are really excited about this. So uh, we're expecting it to launch sometime in 2021. And so that's really uh, uh, important. Uh, even prior to that though, we have launched a series that we called, uh, that we call Courageous Conversations. And Courageous Conversations are one hour uh, sessions that begin to surface um, issues like unconscious bias and privilege, microaggressions, and things that get in the way of inclusive thinking. So we, we have launched that at our league. We have launched it with a number of clubs. I think I have led about a dozen of those sessions or so with clubs to this point and more to come. Um, so that is really helping to pave the way um, for understanding and allyship and, 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 and really pushing things forward. Another thing that we're actively working on is um, with, you heard me mention the player inclusion committee a little while ago. We are actively working on, as we speak, the development of a curriculum for players and coaches and, and related personnel that they will go through to ensure that they have the tools that they need to be as inclusive as possible and to create the kind of environment that we're, that we're seeking to create. I don't know if you want to add anything there, Jeff, but. Yeah, I mean, just just to echo that, and I mean, you, you definitely nailed it. And the experiences are, are truthful. But one thing that I wanted to reiterate is the intent of the work that we're trying to do is 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 not something where it's a check the box mm -hmm. or it's saying here's a campaign or here's, you know, just something that we feel like we have to do. We're trying to evoke cultural change in, 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 in this work. So you, you, you made a great point when you talk about ownership and senior leadership within organizations. We understand that it's a top down, but yet it's also a bottom up approach. Absolutely. With, and, and, and with that, with that meeting in the middle, this is when culture changes. And this is when you start to see um, the personal connections, because that's the challenge with racism, is that a lot of people can disassociate themselves with it if they've never dealt with it personally. Right. So what we're trying to do with these conversations is make it personal. Right. Make it hurt. Hear stories of things that we've gone through personally or that our children who are playing in this sport are, are, have, have gone through. And once you're able to 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 break that cycle and, and truly educate folks on that, then that's when you start to see that cultural change happen. And this is something that, um, as Brian also alluded to with our councils and committees, we want to make sure we, in, you know, we infiltrate the entire hockey ecosystem. That's right. So, so these conversations are not just happening at the NHL level but they're also happening at USA Hockey, at Hockey Canada, at our major junior leagues and, and organizations, all the way down through our youth hockey uh, leagues and, and clubs. 
So that's that's the key to all of this. It can't just live at the NHL level, but it has to make its way on. That's fantastic. You actually ended up answering a few of the questions that we're getting in the chat with Sorry. that. Uh, no, that's no, that's fantastic because we have about five minutes left. So I have one more question, and then we'll, we'll hopefully get to uh, uh, a couple of the ones in the chat. But uh, there's been a lot of reports in terms of uh, professional sports leagues having to, you know, deal with incidents of inappropriate racial, homophobic behavior, language. Are there any steps the NHL is taking, Jeff, to ensure? that this doesn't uh, occur in hockey? And if it occurs, what's the plan? Yeah, absolutely. And this and this is a very, very, you know, high priority for for Commissioner Bettman and, and his executive table. Uh, and and w- the way that's going to look is, first and foremost, we've already made it clear that we have a zero tolerance policy. Absolutely. You know, any, 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 you know, behavior that's, whether it's involving NHL personnel, you know, our players, front office staff, all the way down through, you know, we want to make sure that unwelcome behavior is is not accepted with, within our game. So what we um, are in the process of launching, and I believe that it, it's slowly making its way out, is our NHL hotline. And this hotline is something that we partnered up with a third party uh, company so that the authenticity of the the the, the the calls that come in, mm-hmm. you know, they're not tainted by any, you know, and the confidentiality right? as well. And exactly, yeah. and the confidentiality. So this NHL hotline is something where we um, are proud to to you know put out there um, to give people those opportunities that when they do experience these, they know where to go. Now the next step from that is we have to make sure we have the policies and processes in place so that when we do receive these and our, and we're working through the third party is that they just don't sit on the shelf, collect us, and these people never receive a response or an action to, to, to the unfortunate situation. So this NHL hotline is something that we are, are, are excited about. Uh, you'll be hearing and receiving more information about it. But um, that's that's the one thing that we definitely wanted to do. Too. Well, that's fantastic to hear, and that's, that's a long time coming. I mean, that's something that we needed in place a long time ago, but I'm glad to see that it's you know it's coming to fruition here real soon. Um, Brian, one of the questions in the chat, uh, in the chat section, and I want to let everybody know uh, we do have just three minutes left, but any of the questions that you've asked in the chat that we didn't get to, uh, we are capturing those and we'll be able to get you a response later on. We'll share a response with you uh, about that later on. Uh, but Brian, this one for you, we've talked about it in some of the committee meetings that I've been in with you. Does the NHL have anything in place specifically de- designed to get minorities interested in hockey, at, i.e. highlighting people of color in promotional campaigns to try to make ice hockey a cool thing to do for, for people of color? And this question is coming from a person named Me Norwood. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's so many things, and Jeff can jump in here too, but but one of the things, as you know, uh, Harner Ryan, that the Fan Inclusion Committee is focused on is normalizing black, brown, BIPOC faces and experiences in our game. So uh, a number of things are, 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 are going are gonna to come uh, as a result of that. I think number one thing will be is making sure the in-arena experience is as positive as possible. So looking at a, one of the things that's being talked about is looking at a uniform code of conduct across, that, that we hope all the teams will adopt. I mean, obviously, each team is an independent entity, but everybody's working together here. And so that's that's one thing that we see, uh, making sure that we are incorporating culture more into games. So and, and making sure it's more than just a, a special night. Right. So not just a black history night or. Punjabi night, but 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 any but but making sure this is ongoing that this can happen on a random Tuesday as well as any other day of the week, right? Of course, once we're allowed back in the arenas. <laughs> um, so um, there's that, and so you know, and, and making sure we're making connections directly with the communities to to pull them in and feel like they can be a part of this game. That's fantastic. So uh, we are out of time, and uh, I want to thank you, Brian Blake and Jeff Scott, for. Uh, being a part of this. It was very important, uh, I know, for everyone participating to hear from the NHL. And it's great to see that uh, there is so much focus from, you know, top down in terms of helping to solve this problem. And so I applaud you and your guys' teams uh, in your efforts. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Jeff and Brian. 
All Thanks right. Thanks so much for having and we th- us. And we thank enjoy. you. Yes, absolutely. All right. So to everyone participating, uh, thanks for all of your questions. And we'll make sure that uh, you get a response to those uh, at some point here in the near future. But we are going to move on from this section. The good analogy that I was given about this is like it's like we're in a conference uh, uh, building, but we're going from room to room. So we're going to get out of this room and head into our next keynote, which is two thoughts on racism in hockey from Dr. Marvin Washington. We'll see you in the next room. Thank you.